Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back once again with the cute, cuddly Skaven, another viewer submitted replay. This time the Skaven are taking on our beloved Empire, so let's see how they do. Uh, Lord Skrulk going to be leading the way here. He's got a typical setup with both of his items there and just a couple spells. Looks like a Vermintide and Pestilent Birth, so lots of summons. Got a couple clan rats with shields up front. Three plague monk sensor bearers, which is a very interesting choice against the Empire. Just an interesting choice in general. You don't see these guys super often because, in my opinion, they're not super great, but they can potentially be good in certain situations. So we'll see how they do here. Uh, we've also got a doom wheel, a couple of gutter runners, a skaven assassin, and a warp lightning cannon, as well as some storm vermins and skaven slave spears. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Maybe some more Slave Spears on the side, but who cares? At the end of the day, we've got uh, Outriders with grenade launchers here for the Empire. We've also got a Luminarch of Hish currently spinning up to take a shot there. Front line of Flagellants. We've got some Free Company, Handgunners, Crossbowmen, a couple of Spearmen, uh, Hellstorm Rocket Battery. Very interesting. Knights of the Blazing Sun. Not a terrible choice. We've also got some Halberdiers, uh, Volkmar the Grim, and a... Uh, uh, Bright Wizard with just the Piercing Bolts of Burning, very interesting. Volkmar does not have Banishment for whatever reason, which I think is a, definitely a mistake against the Skaven, but uh, yeah, a bit of a uh, missed target there. The Not sure if that Luminarch was actually shooting at the Assassin, but it just made contact with the Clan Rats there, which is probably the best use of Clan Rats that uh, has ever been thought of. <laughs> Those are probably the most cost-effective Clan Rats have ever been in just eating a single shot from a Luminarch. But uh, anyway, over here you can see, speaking of cost-effective and eating shots, these uh, Skaven Slave Spheres very cost-effectively getting blown up by grenades and then promptly pushing those grenade, grenade outriders away. They actually, uh, looks like the Warp Lightning Cannon maybe made some contact there and did a bit of damage, but now the Warp Lightning Cannon is switching directly to the Luminarch, so a bit of a Laz Cannon duel, if you will, here. Luminarch, I'm not sure what it's shooting at here. Ooh. Swing and a miss there. Again, I'm not sure what the targeting was on, uh, whether it was like these clan rats or the Plague Monk sensor bearers, but the Doom Wheel uh, just comes straight through the line here, punches straight through the flagellants, and gets right on the, into the back line to tie up these uh, hand gunners and the uh, crossbowmen and more. This is very key because these sensor bearers are, expen are an expensive unit that don't have a missile block chance and very low armor. You need to protect them from missile units and some very good play there in order to tie up the Empire missile units to do that. You can see the Luminarch is getting routed off by the Warp Lightning Cannon, so Skaven last cannons, greater numbers, and are able to win out there. Volkmar, though, charging through. Going to be doing some good damage to these sensor bearers on the far side here. He, of course, on his chariot, especially dropping those big buffs. Looks like that uh, Grand Hammer of Sigmar. A very good use of the Rival Hide Talisman on the Assassin is almost directly on top of Volkmar, nicely counteracting uh, that Grand Hammer of Sigmar, even so much so because the Rival Hide Talisman is 44. The Grand Hammer of Sigmar is only 26. It's actually a greater debuff than the actual buff itself, so some very good play there. Uh, Skrulk dropping that uh, Rod of Corruption. Getting into these hand gunners, making sure those missile units stay tied down. And the Doom Wheel also doing the same. Looks like some summoned uh, Plague Monks doing very well here. Um, yeah, some really solid use there. Unfortunately, these uh, sensor bearers down here did get charged by some Knights of the Blazing Sun, though the Knights of the Blazing Sun are overstaying their wel welcome quite a bit. Uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun are a lot less tanky than Reich's Guard, so you, they're more of a pure shock cavalry. You need to make sure they stay on the move. They do have some magic resistance, though, so the magic damage of the sensor bearers isn't going to be doing as much as it potentially could. But uh, you can see the Empire having some issues in the front line of all of their units being routed off. Volkmar's still relatively healthy. Looks like he's going to be going after uh, Lord Scroll potentially there. But uh, Plague Monk's cutting through the Flagellants quite nicely, just all across the board there. And uh, the Sensor Bears especially, the, the Flagellants I believe have a bit of physical resistance, yep, while that strength of the Penitent buff is up. So the magic damage will apply somewhat there. Of course, the armor piercing doesn't really matter because the flagellants are more or less completely naked. But the uh, night runners, or sorry, gutter runners, also getting some very cost-effective shots here on these flagellants. Again, the doom wheel completely healthy at this point, so uh, not looking too great for the empire. And uh, hellstorm rocket battery, definitely a fun pick. Gonna kind of awkwardly stop up the doom wheel here, but uh, really have not found these guys to be cost-effective at all. Even the regiment renown version, it's just way too expensive for what it actually does here. Looks like some piercing bolts of burning going to be dropping down on those gutter runners there. 
Uh, oop, didn't quite get away in time, and it does do some pretty devastating damage. But unfortunately, uh, too little too late, as I like to say. The Luminarch whiffing a shot, just hitting a tree there, and then getting blasted by the uh, Warp Lightning Cannons. Plague Monk Sensor Bear is finishing off some units in the back line, and you can see the Plague Rats just pushing through way too aggressively for the Empire at this point. And uh, very fittingly, there's an Empire City burning in the background, no doubt from the uh, foul machinations of the Skaven. But uh, anyway, not too much longer, and the uh, Empire forces should give up here, although not for throwing some grenades at these Sensor Bears, doing some pretty effective damage overall. But uh, yeah, these nasty Rat Boys, too much for the Empire today. And I have to say, this Empire build, a little bit lacking in heavy cavalry. Again, I already kind of said my piece about the, uh, the rocket battery there, but just in general, I think you need a lot more heavy cavalry against the Skaven. Uh, the Doom Wheel is also a very nice pick by the Skaven player um, in order to kind of counteract traditional heavy cavalry. Obviously, Empire has armor-piercing missiles, and you do have things like Demigrip Knights with Halberds, especially with the Faith buffs, they can take it out quite easily. Um, but those aren't always brought in this matchup, just because in most people's minds, you know, Skaven aren't necessarily the most armored faction in the world. So something like a Doom Wheel can punish uh, your opponent if they don't bring the appropriate tools to deal with it, and being quite effective in this battle. So big thanks to Valnir for sending that one in. Very fun battle. Good use of those Plague Monk sensor barriers. Not uh, too often you get to see those units used effectively, but they did definitely do very well in this battle. 93, 154 for these guys. Just cut through that Empire front line and like butter. Uh, the Doom Wheel also racking up 90, uh, sorry, 89 kills, uh, 2 XP chevrons. Warp Lightning Cannon started out with some XP chevrons, but managed to pick up maybe one or two more. I don't remember exactly how many uh, over the course of the battle, but uh, taking out that Luminar Capish in and of itself was paying, uh, paying off. So, I mean, this is, uh, what, like 1,400 plus uh, compared to a 1,000 point artillery piece. So definitely very cost-effective use there. And the rest of the army, you know, more or less doing what it needs to. Clan Rats, 48 kills on Clan Rats is actually not bad at all. Uh, for the Empire side, 63 kills on Volkmar, not bad. Uh... Definitely looking for him a little bit more, though, and he has a lot more damage potential. We'll talk about that in just a minute. 38 kills for the Bright Wizard is also okay, but um, I think his spell set selection left a little bit to be desired. Flagellants are okay in this matchup, but I would probably cut at least one. Let's actually just go straight to the uh, Empire build critique, if you will. But, uh, yeah, Volkmar is definitely a great pick against the Skaven. Don't disagree with that at all. Um, you know, Balthazar's final cheese mutation can be pretty effective here, but if you want to go with a very fun thematic build, certainly Volkmar, uh, up on his chariot can do some work. I would definitely, definitely recommend Banishment. Um, the Skaven, of course, tend to bring lots and lots of numbers. You'll almost always face a big infantry blob, uh, where you can get some really good value from this, so I pretty much recommend bringing it every time. The Grand Soulfire is another one where, uh, ma a lot of Skaven units do magic damage, and so having this, uh, magic resistance can potentially be very powerful. Uh, Grand Shield of Faith generally pretty useful in Grand Hammer of Sigmar as well. We'll go ahead and cut the other two just for cost's sake, and of course you'll want that Jay Griffin as well. Uh, the Bright Wizard, I'm going to take a slightly different spell selection. Uh, the Fireball can actually be reasonably useful for counter artillery fire, although uh, range, let's see, 300 meters just for comparison's sake. The Skaven artillery piece has a range of... 430, okay, so it does have a shorter range, so you might potentially need to go into range, which would be dangerous, um, but it can be effective. Although, with the range consideration, we'll go ahead and cut it. I'm going to keep Burning Head mainly for roasting out Escape in Frontline. Flaming Sword of Ruin is also very effective as, uh, you know, the Plague Monk type units and the Ninja Rat type units have physical resistance, so that Flaming Sword of Ruin, very useful there. Cascading Fire Cloak, if we have the points. It is always useful to have extra melee defense and armor piercing damage. Uh, let's see, for the front line, we'll go ahead and grab a couple flagellants, lots of spearmen with shields, uh, a couple state troop swordsmen as well. Uh, let's see here, we're going to want the faith demis, just in case of uh, Doom Wheel, and we can also get some good synergy from the Lore of Fire there. Again, you'll want to make sure you keep this Kindle Flame. You're going to get a lot of synergy with this army from that uh, particular... Uh, ability there every time you cast a spell. So we'll just want to make sure that the uh, Warrior Priest has this Banner of Eternal Flame so that as he's sticking with those Demigriff Knights and giving them, you know, bonus attack and everything, he'll also be giving them Flaming Attacks so you get a bit of synergy with that Kindle Flame there. Skaven do have, what, the Helped Abomination that's weak to fire damage 
and just in general, you know, with Flaming Sword Ruin and so on, you'll be getting some good value there. Um, and then to round things off, we'll go ahead and grab a couple of Knights of the Blazing Sun, and just for fun, a single Pistolier, uh, just to be uh, kind of a nuisance. So this is a lot more of an aggressive Empire build, a lot less missile units, but you have more cavalry, you have some anti-large AP to deal with Doom Wheels, and, uh, you know, just kind of a more, sp uh, yeah, spread around value, I guess. A little bit less value wrapped up in the infantry core, and a little more spread around in the different phases of the battle, although significantly less spent on skirmish, certainly. Uh, the Bright Wizard does give you some good synergy here. You've got the Knights of the Blazing Sun. This is, so this is very much kind of a fire, uh, almost crusade-like build, if you will. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Certainly you could try and squeeze some points to maybe get a Luminarch, which would certainly be fun. I don't know that it's necessarily super effective, and it can be risky there, because as you saw, Warp Lightning Cannons are quite good at countering Luminarchs. So uh, just so you know, in a Laz Cannon battle, the green Laz Cannon usually wins. And with that PSA, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. So every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.